Hey, what's up, everybody? It's episode 211 of Martial Arts Radio, Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, because I'm Jeremy. I'm the founder of Whistlekick, and that's why we call it Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. I'm feeling a little bit goofy. I'm fresh off an entire weekend of training. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about where I went, why I went, and some of the takeaways for those of you that might be attending similar events, or some advice for those of you that put on these events because there's a lot of lessons to be learned. Remember, you can find the show notes. We'll have some links from today's episode over there, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can find all of our products at whistlekick.com and links to everything else that we do from there. There's a lot. There's more in the works. Oh, man, the new thing that we're working on. Ooh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to talk about it, but there's stuff that's got to happen before we can talk about it. So I'll just have to leave you with that teaser. So what did I do? Over the weekend, I was in upstate New York, Herkimer, New York, at the Herkimer County Community College. Now, why was I there? Because it's summertime right now. It might not be summer when you listen to this, but it was summer when I went. It's summer when I'm recording. I was there for the 35th installment of the Super Summer Seminars martial arts event. And as much as I love alliteration, that's not why I was there. I was there because it was my second time. See, in 2015, some friends of the show... Uh, specifically Master Adam Grogan, encouraged me to attend this event. He said, hey, come check this out. I think you really dig it. So I grabbed my friend, Master Earl Smith, who's been on the show, his wife. The three of us drove out there, and we had an amazing weekend of training and meeting up with people, and just, it was it was an incredible time. If you know anything about my schedule, my calendar, if you if you kind of stalk the calendar at whistlekick.com or you check out the stuff that is going up locally at martialartscalendar.com, you'll see that there are quite a few camps that I've been to this year. This is, um, I want to say this was my fifth one, <laughs> and there are several more on the agenda over the next few weeks. It seems like we stuff a lot of those in in our short New England summers. Honestly, I love getting into class. I love training in that way. But I also love these weekend events because you get to know martial artists as more than people who train. You get to know them as human beings, as individuals. You get to build a relationship with them in a way that you wouldn't generally be able to in you know, a few minutes before and after a class. And you get exposed to a lot more people, a lot more stuff. I've had a lot of fun doing these events, and specifically with this one over the weekend, I came back more dedicated, more passionate about my training because I'm connecting dots, I'm seeing the way things are going, and that excites me. I saw a lot of the people that I'd made friends with last time. Quite a few have come on the show. I'm not going to name them because I didn't think to make a list beforehand, and I will leave someone out. But if you go back to the first probably 30, 40 episodes, you'll see quite a few names in there that I met, and I believe I mentioned in each case, that I met at this event. Now, I don't want to throw anybody else's event under the bus. I don't want to say that this one is my favorite, because they're all different, and there are different things about each that I love, but there's something particularly different about this event, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to hone in on some of those differences, because it is a special event. It's an event that has a, a lot of return, not just attendees, but instructors, and it seems like it's continuing to grow, and everybody there just seems to have a good time. And I'm not used to seeing a lot of that, at least not at this level, at the other events I've been to over the years. The main thing, and I think the one that really sets us apart, the, the one that I can put my finger on, is the barriers between the instructors and the attendees are almost non-existent. In fact, the majority of the instructors are taking other people's sessions. And that's huge to me. It's not, hey, here are your instructors and, you know, lots of bowing and, and lots of titles and rank and all this. And I'm not picking on that because that stuff does matter. You know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for people that have put their time in. But when you have different people from all sorts of different arts from all over, not just the country, but countries, because it's an international event, Everyone just kind of drops the formality. And not that it's disrespectful, but the respect is tempered a little bit with that formality. And it means that 
everyone there is more willing to ask questions. They're more willing to share and to learn. And that's what comes out of this event. The amount that I've learned in the two times that I've been greatly exceeds the other events that I've been to. And it's just not just because of the diversity of the instructors or the no, the amount of instruction. It's because the people that are getting up to teach were just students in the last session. They'll be students in the next one. If you've checked out the episode, in episode 179, I talked about the difficulty of teaching at an event like this after coming back from another one. And these guys just, and, and women, everybody, really just knocks it out. Financially, it's a good value. I had a great time. You know, that's, I mean, those are the reasons. That's why, why I like this event. That's why I went back. Now, how could it be better? Unfortunately, it's a list that plagues everyone that's ever put on an event like this. People complain about the food and, you know, it's, it's held at a college and they do what they can with, you know, what we're paying them. Things could always be cheaper, but I think that in this case, it's the values there. And for me, I would like another day, you know, another half day of training. You know, maybe we all roll in Friday for lunch instead of Friday for dinner. But that may change the, the culture of the event. So who knows? You know, I'm, I'm certainly going to go back. None of those are hard complaints. But the last thing I want to leave you with is my, my takeaways, the, the bits that I've pulled that I think about when I'm putting on an event or when I'm looking at offering advice to someone on their event because this thing does run so well. The first thing, I, I think the most important thing, is every event has a culture to it, a vibe, uh, an environment, whatever you want to call it. And if you don't dial that in, nothing else seems to work right. And if you don't form the culture intentionally, it will form without you. Sometimes that's good if you have the right people. If you don't have the right people there, that culture, eh, it's not going to go the way that you want it to. In this case, the culture comes from the way the event brings in instructors. They teach, they train, they have a good time. There's a social dynamic to, to some of the event. And that puts people on a more level playing field rather than a, you know, instructors and students uh, disparate culture. Whatever event you have, you've got to look for your niche. And this event offers a really affordable all-in-one training package. It includes the food, it includes your own dorm room and the training and your shirt and, and the whole thing. And it goes really well because of that. A lot of the events that I've attended, when people have to get their own room and they're, they're taking care of their own food, it takes a lot of the attention away from their training. And again, it, it breaks that level playing field everybody's staying in a dorm at this event. Everybody's eating the same food that they're probably not thrilled with. Well, instead of some people bringing a bag lunch and sitting in the corner and some people going out to a restaurant, which kind of creates this exclusivity, you know, we're, we're all just sitting at these, these college cafeteria tables and mingling around. You've got to listen to the attendees. If you put on an event and you go to put it on again and you haven't talked to the people that came the first time, why not? They have feedback for you. Maybe they're not going to reach out with it, especially if it's mildly good or mildly bad. People tend to complain when they're really upset. Some people will pay you a good compliment, but for the majority, the 80% of the feedback in the middle, you're not going to hear it unless you ask. You can send out a survey, emails, call people on the phone, ask them when you see them, and don't be defensive. If someone has feedback, if someone's willing to open themselves and tell you what they think, thank them. Because even if you disagree, it's their opinion. And if it's their opinion, it's probably someone else's opinion too. Each time you put on an event, each time you do something, try to make it a little bit better. Aim for 15% change. You want to be careful making really big changes. Sometimes you have to. But if you're making those smaller 15% shifts, Chances are you're going to come up with some stuff that's good, some stuff with, that's bad, and the event can keep moving forward. Don't get wrapped up in the way you've always done things. If you've put on an event and it's been the same for the last 20 years, it's probably time to change things. 
Because what is easy and convenient for you is often boring to other people. And lastly, and I've seen the full gamut of this at, at various events, be they tournaments or seminars or camps, remember who the customer is. If you put on an event and people are paying you to be there, you're serving them. Don't make them feel poorly about their decision to come and spend money with you because they won't come back. There's a humility that I think is instrumental in putting on an event to recognize that those people have put their faith in you, that what you're offering is worth their time and their money. We live in a busy world and most people don't have all of the disposable income that they want. So when they choose to share that with you, it deserves your respect towards them. So that's where we're at. Remember, you can check out the calendar for the events Whistlekick will be at at whistlekick.com. You can check out all of the events that we know of, all the events people are submitting over at martialartscalendar.com. Please go check it out. Help us add more, add more. We're really trying to build this up. It's free. It's always going to be free. It's free to look at. It's free to submit to. There's no advertising on it. We're just, we're just trying to help people know about what's out there because I love this stuff and you probably do too. That's all for today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.